How you doing? My name's Drew, and I'm gonna be your electrician today. And, look, I may not be ASE certified or <laughs> whatever, but I'm, I'm a DIY enthusiast, right? And I'm building out a mining farm. And I built out one before, but not to scale. We've toured some major mining farms in the past. To be honest, their designs are pretty incredible. Much beyond my pay grade. Some of them also literally have engineering degrees and they thermally engineered some of these mining farm designs. But I just had a meeting with my electric company and I just wanna share what I'm doing, what I'm still figuring out and some things I'm changing from my original design to this 2.0 significant improvement, hopefully, as well as even more ambitious than before. My name is Vasco on the Vasco on YouTube channel where we mine Bitcoin and all kinds of other cryptocurrencies. So I built out a mining farm with all of my savings, all of my cash. If you run 100 amps to your shed, you can only utilize 80% of it 24 seven. That is gonna be your amp load. In addition to these four outlets, you're gonna to wanna to run a simple 120 volt outlet. These four outlets I just described were all ran 240 volt is going to be a thicker wire capable of carrying a much denser load. So it all started a few years ago. I basically got into crypto through crypto mining. Specifically, I was enthralled with mining Ethereum with graphics cards. I love the multi uh, purpose function, the multi-use of GPUs. So like crypto went belly up because I didn't really fully believe in it then, but I was intoxicated by the premise of it. I was like, well, I can turn these into gaming rigs and, and or just sell them for parts. I always joked that if things didn't work out, I would be opening a used PC gaming hardware store. Quickly outgrew my house and so I grabbed a shed. I dropped the shed right next to my house and I pulled 100 amps into it. Very simple setup. So. In electricity, you have voltages, you have phases. You, there's a lot of things that at play here. And uh, I just wanna break down what, what, I've, what I know and what I've learned, you know, just share it so hopefully you don't make any costly mistakes and even just kind of understand this. Please pay attention to the on-screen pictures, videos, everything. I'm gonna try to add as many just uh, supportive assets as I can to make this just easier to understand i'll have a bunch of links out down below and i'd highly recommend you check out our electricity guide for setting up a diy at home mining farm there will be some overlap in this video uh, along with that video but this is going to focus on kind of that and then the evolution to really you know stepping up we say a medium-sized mining farm so let's start with the basics in the united states of america your residential electric rate is considered 110 volt 120 volt you know you're dealing with 120 voltage you may look at a power supply like an atx power supply and it'll say like 110 to 240 volt you look at some say bitcoin miners and on the side of that power supply it'll say normally something like 180 volt to 240 volt if it has that that means it only operates on a higher voltage higher voltage is more efficient so just rough rule of thumb here so let's say you're pulling a thousand watts which is a measurement of electricity to draw right so if you're pulling a thousand watts on 120 volt and then you pull a thousand watts on 240 volt they say you're probably getting about five percent more efficiency on that 240 volt so you would be saving 50 watts you build out a whole mining farm you're going to be saving a lot of money long term and it's just kind of why be wasteful and why not save money money saved is money made in essence and so i don't even want to hear that argument about of like i got this on sale so i saved 250 dollars off of this one thousand dollar item no you didn't save 250 all you did was spend 750 that's not how math works and trust me I know because I took algebra twice. Does that mean I'm dumb or I took algebra one and algebra two? I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments below and I'm gonna guess that I know which one you're gonna say. Outside of the United States, they don't operate on 120 volt. It's just like everyone laughs at us for miles and inches and they got the metric system and they've got better residential electricity. But don't worry, the EU is a scam. That's why the dollar is worth more than the euro now, but even worse so is the fact that European electricity rates are oftentimes awful. But it's not meant to be a real mean jab or anything. My roots are European and uh, I'd love to go to Europe. It's really high on the bucket list, but I express more empathy in that regard. 
So let's bring it back to the focus here. In a home, you have one, we're just gonna call it 120 volt, right? And in your home, you actually have 240 volt because you can run, you have two 120 legs and you can run them in tandem and then you can get 240 volt in your home. This is safer. You can pull more amps on this because it's more efficient. It's just a win across the board. So basically you always pull 240 volt if you're getting serious about mining. And also many mining rigs have attached power supplies that only operate on 240 volt. They're a multi-voltage device. They're more efficient on 240 volt, which is exactly what I'm gonna do in my home, which I'm standing in right now. Uh, this is actually the first time I've been in my garage. I'm pretty excited. We're still building it, but yeah, so I'll do an electric walkthrough when I get to that stage, hopefully about next month. But um, I'll walk through what I'm doing, why running 120 volt and 240 volt in numerous places in the home, obviously, as well as ethernet throughout because hardwired internet is always a win over Wi-Fi. You think IOT internet of things in the digital age and you want everything wireless, but that creates more interference. There's conspiracies about how that negatively impacts your body. I'm not really getting into that today, but what I do want to focus on is actually a video we made years ago about electromagnetic interference and really, in essence, almost like an electric radiation, right? That sounds a little dramatic. Some studies say that this can damage and decrease your red blood cells. You got a lot of those though, but what if you were a small dog who is much more heavily impacted by things like that? The smaller body, that same dosage has a much higher impact. So if you got a little furry friend, like for me, I've got a little furry manager named Tails. She's our CEO. That's Chief Electric Officer. Uh, she's the cutest pup in the business. But learning about those things and the health issue that almost killed her a few years ago, I cannot prove these are directly related and I'm not even saying they are. But I do want to take proactive measures to just safeguard her health the best I can. Furthermore, hardwired internet is faster and more reliable, and again, it creates less interference. More devices trying to talk to everything all the time. Imagine digital highways. They're all hitting, intersecting, and basically you just get degradation. But I guess I'm off topic and the video sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're still here with me, let's get back to electricity. Basically, major mining farms do not operate on 110 voltage or 120 voltage. And actually it's not even 240 voltage because in a home you're dealing with single phase. Basically, again, you have two legs of 120. That's why on your, if you look at your circuit panel, there's two, there's two legs, there's two sides. In tandem, again, you basically just combine them and that's how you get 240. But there's something called three phase electricity. Three phase electricity can be done numerous ways. The most popular way is gonna be three legs right? You're going to break it off three times and you're going to end up with three 208 voltage legs. Ideally, you'd rather have three 240 volt legs, but that's just not really common or standard. And that's exactly what I'm working on trying to bring out to my mining farm. It would allow me just much better scalability options. There's pre-built mining farm shipping containers that are pre-wired and designed exactly for three phase 208 because that's what everyone's serious is using. That's the standard industrial application. That's the standard commercial application. And when you start mining Bitcoin seriously, you're building towards an industrial grade mining facility. The good news is that getting three phase is possible for me. The bad news is that I don't already have it. And when it comes to build outs like this, they're gonna charge you. They're gonna charge me. We haven't run all the numbers yet. We're gonna look at how much money they're basically supposed to make off me. Then they'll decrease my bill accordingly some. We're still in discussions. I'm worried it's gonna be a six figure bill. And I'm gonna to have to crunch all the numbers to see how I can traverse this. I'm pulling single phase right now to just kind of get up and running. And again, for that, I'm just gonna do what I know. I'm gonna run two legs in tandem and have 240 volt. It'll get me started and it'll get, it'll get my idle gear mining for me. I'll be able to start mining Bitcoin. I'll try to mine some ether before it's no longer mineable, but you know how that story goes. Among many other altcoins, I've got idle gear that could be earning me passive income 24 seven, 365, making money while you sleep, right? It's the dream. And when you actually already have an own mining gear and it's sitting there doing nothing, that's a terrible feeling. You're missing out on gains. As long as this gear earns more than it burns, 
that's a big win in my book, especially because consult the professionals, not financial advice, is that you uh, expense your electricity. And now your business can go from making a little bit of money to maybe making a medium or potentially even a large amount of money. Expenses play a big part, really just crunching your final, your final numbers. So for me, it's still a big TBD to be decided, right? And if you've been following along with the Viscoin YouTube channel, you may know that I'm really excited about building a solar powered Bitcoin mining farm. Yeah, absolutely. But that's gonna take me time and it's gonna be expensive. I'm gonna have to do it with the money I earn with my mining business. I'm gonna constantly reinvest and grow. My solar build is going to be a slow evolution. I wanna make sure I do things right and I don't get overextended and end up in a position where I could go belly up as a mining farm operator. That's why I need to pull some serious juice right now just to get my gear going and transition to solar as we move along. I still have meetings to decide exactly how I'm gonna be able to do that with my electric company. And I'm looking to grid tie it. You know, that's when I really need to, you know, strike up some kind of deal with them because if I don't grid tie, then I have to have batteries. Batteries is more investment, it's more to deal with. And it's just not a route I want to go down right now. I would like to do a pilot experiment for batteries, just, you know, even for, for fun, for research, because I honestly love this stuff. But again, I don't want that many batteries. I'm, I'll be out here looking like Duracell, man. Even though supply chains have gotten better, there still are some supply chain issues. And even certain transformer sizes and CTs and even just amp panels dealing with delays, issues, increased cost, people paying a premium secondhand for a lot of these things. And so, you know, I'm trying to navigate this the best way I can, because even if, you know, it, it, it's kind of a numbers game, you know, what is this worth and how much can we invest? Because again, I, I can't, I can't get stuck underwater and then Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies trend down and, and I'm underwater for, you know, maybe years and you know what they like to say, the crypto winner and extended bear market. And then it's like, fuck man, you know, how long can I survive paying out of pocket? So yeah, that's basically where I'm at, you know, bringing out single phase in tandem to just get stuff up and going now. Cause downtime is lost money. Lost money is bad business. Bad businesses don't make it. Then bringing out three phase as soon as I can. And then converting my facility to operate effectively off of that. Looking at future scaling, I'd like to evaluate some pre-built options that I can just drop and you know plug miners in and go. It depends on my current situation, market conditions. You know, I'm rapidly adjusting and evolving, and being agile is the only way I can survive and, and, and really thrive being a smaller mining farm operator compared to publicly traded giants like core scientific or riot you know i'm talking about buying one container these guys order up 200. we are not the same but no matter no matter what i'm excited i mean we got all these projects moving we're stuck in just a really stagnant area for a while we couldn't get the home going we couldn't get the mining farm going now everything's going at 10x speed and you know, prices aren't quite as high as they were uh uh, previously but um you know that sucks and like when you're when you're short-sighted that that's negative it's demoralizing and it's even depressing but actually taking a step back and you know having some you know fortitude i'm like this is great you know supply chain is getting a little bit better prices of mining rigs and even just infrastructure components are dropping sometimes dramatically a bitcoin miner is trading for half the price if not less you know 40 percent of what it was trading for just a even few months ago several months ago that creates a better buy-in for me because buying a cheaper miner means i have a shorter path to break even increasing my return on investment as they love to say roi so hey that's all i got i hope you enjoyed it my name is Vosker on the Vosker on youtube channel hit the subscribe button and uh, join me on my crazy crypto journey and see if I, uh, if I sail or fail.